I'll put on a nice show for all of you in this last episode of Battle Guides featuring Tannis. Tannis is a mobile positioning character who uses her great effects and amazing unique ability to put on great plays. However, that all comes at the cost of having generally poor stats, being incredibly tricky to play, and of course, being very susceptible to card lock. Tannis' unique ability is Grand Play. Tannis has three puppet markers, Loki, Eris, and Mephisto, and begins the game by putting them in the space where she starts and the spaces adjacent to her. Now, before setting attack pairs, she must select one of the puppets and then switch places with them. Now, she can't pick puppets that she picked last beat, or puppets that her opponent is standing in because, well, you can't occupy the same space as your opponent. However, that one where she can't pick puppets that she picked last beat can be bypassed if there are no other options left. Now, at the end of every beat, she swaps back with whichever puppet she's swapped with at the start of the beat in order to leave the three puppets on the board again and this keeps going on and on. This unique ability might not seem like a lot and quite honestly it's just a fancy way of dictating where her puppet markers go but it's much more than that if you look past the surface. You see the puppet markers move around a lot because of Tannis' styles and base and this proves to be very interesting because your opponent technically has to consider two possible locations Tannis will teleport to during the next beat. This makes it extremely hard to corner Tannis because the moment you corner her, she just switches to a different puppet, which may or may not be on the entire opposite end of the board. Which makes Tannis a very good character when it comes to positioning because she always has a way out of terrible, terrible positions. However, this also makes it very hard to play as Tannis because you have to consider so many things when positioning your markers. Will it be better to place it in the space adjacent to him or far away? What if I need this specific puppet next beat? What if he moves onto this puppet then I can't use that anymore? And so on, so forth. These multiple decisions make Tannis a very complicated character to use, especially if you're just starting out. So, if you're going to be playing Tannis, I highly suggest that you play other characters first because although her cards are simple and the effects are not tricky and the unique ability is just a way to move around, the implications that all of these things have as a cohesive whole are tremendous and it takes a lot of skill to play Tannis right. Now, one important thing to talk to you guys about this unique ability is that you can't pick puppets that you picked before and you can't pick a puppet that an opponent is currently standing on because you and the opponent can't occupy the same space. Now why is this important? Because this involves a certain thing that Tannis has called puppet locking. Um, puppet locking basically involves the opponent standing on specific puppets to force Tannis to possess a specific puppet. Now let's say that you possessed Loki during the previous beat and then your opponent is now stepping on Eris. Given the wording of your unique ability, you have no choice and must possess Mephisto during this beat. Now, why is that important? Why is your opponent's ability to dictate which puppet you control important? Because a lot, and I literally mean a lot of Tannis' styles involve needing specific puppets on the board or possessing a specific puppet. This basically means that by controlling which puppet you go to, your opponent is not only controlling where you go, but he also controls what you can do. And this can be very devastating if you don't have the right cards in your hand. For example, you're left with the three styles in your hand that require you to use specific puppets, but your opponent has now forced you to possess that puppet, meaning that the puppet is no longer on the board. Which means that those styles might as well be blank for all intents and purposes. And that's what's the scary thing about Tannis is. You have to position your puppets in such a way that you'll gain huge advantage, but at the same time, if you position them wrong and your opponent, well, puppet locks you, you're kind of in a terrible, terrible position. So practice, practice, practice!
First up is Valiant, or what I'd like to call the Loki style. It has okayish range and really bad priority, but it makes up for it in some of the most powerful passive effects you'll ever see on a positioning based character. Now, the first one is if Loki is between you and the opponent, you gain Soak 3, which is absurd because not a lot of characters get that, and some juggernauts don't even get that at all. And the other passive effect, which synergizes very well with the first one, is that neither Tannis or the opponent can step into Loki's space. This basically means that by having Loki out, you're not only able to get huge amounts of Soak, you're also able to dictate where your opponent can go. And because your opponent can't step into Loki's space, so long as Loki started on the spaces between you and the opponent, the soak will almost always be there because your opponent has no way of getting past Loki and he can't pull you past Loki either. It's very, very powerful and it oftentimes becomes a degenerative play because as long as Loki's between you and the opponent, you almost always win out on almost every trade known to man, woman, ghost, werewolf, or dragon, or what have you. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly suggest pairing this one with Shot, because Shot just loves this so, so much because of the added stun guard and the added range. However, if you're feeling a bit more cautious, I can suggest using it with Burst as well. Even though the added gap might not seem like a lot, if your opponent has some form of hit confirm in the form of movement and range, you can and always be able to use the added retreat from Burst to keep you safe from whatever options your opponent may have. Climactic is what I'd like to call the Mephisto style. It's fast and it ignores Soak, which is really good for, well, a generally poor stat character. Um, the before activating effect is what is the highlight of this style, because it forces you to switch places with Mephisto if Mephisto's on the board. This basically allows Tannis to either A, close the gap and get the hit in, or B, dodge the attack by getting out of there. Now, um, be very careful because it's highly reliant on where Mephisto is and if Mephisto's on the board in the first place. Without Mephisto, this might as well ha have no effect most of the time. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly suggest pairing it with... Strike, so that you can take advantage of that extra hit confirm or drive if you think that hit confirm isn't enough. Distressed is what I'd like to call the Eris style because its main drawing effect is reliant on Eris's existence on the board. Now, it's slow, but it's made up for by the start of beat effect, which is arguably one of the most powerful effects you'll see on Tannis. She can move the opponent one or two spaces towards the Eris marker, if Eris is on the board. Now, if the opponent is already on Eris, you can move them in either direction. This basically is one of the most powerful effects you can have in this game, because it allows you to not only get opponents in closer for hit confirm, but it also allows you to pull them away to dodge their attack. It's very, very powerful if you get to position your opponent right, especially if they don't have any of their ranged attacks or any of their hit confirm. Now, end of beat, you can move any puppet marker to any space, which is basically sort of the opposite of playful. By moving Tannis around using playful, you're actually just moving the puppet marker for next beat. But by moving a puppet marker on this beat using uh, distressed, you are able to technically change where Tannis can be the next beat, which is very, very good considering that if you're trapped in the corner or maybe you need one of your puppets to be in the right place so you can get into the right positioning, such as in the case of getting for a Valiant with Loki, this is very good as a means of setup. So watch out for that. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly suggest pairing this with Grasp so that you're able to get them in and hit them really fast with a 4 priority attack that allows you to dodge, or with shot. Given that you can pull the opponent away from you using the Eris marker, you're able to technically give yourself more leeway to use shot, and basically the only way to hit them at that range is with shot anyway, so watch out for that. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly suggest pairing this attack with shot, because you're able to push them away from you and then use the extra range and shot to get the hit in. Or, if you're feeling really tricky, you can use Burst to create a huge gap between you and the opponent from melee range and then, you know, hit them in the face afterwards. Next up is Playful. Playful has range 
And that's pretty much it. But the reveal effect is really powerful, allowing you to steal bonuses for power, range, and priority from your opponent, and then taking them for your own. This is very powerful against a lot of stat monsters who rely on tokens, unique abilities, and other triggered effects to gain their huge stat boosts. You can then steal all of that for free and then use it against them. It's very, very powerful. However, the other side of the coin is that characters who are strong on their own and basically have all of their stats printed as opposed to getting them through bonuses are basically unaffected by this card and this card is, might as well be blank against them. However, the big benefit here is that the end of beat effect is really, really powerful, allowing Tannis to basically reposition herself anywhere on the board, which indirectly repositions one of the puppets anywhere on the board. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly suggest pairing this one with Drive to take advantage of that range, or Grasp to take advantage of that range and speed. Next up is Storyteller. If the few other styles before were reliant on which puppets were on the board, this one is reliant on which puppet isn't on the board. Depending on which puppet Tannis is currently possessing, she gains different bonuses, which also means that she can only gain one of these bonuses at any given time. Now, if she's possessing Loki, she is able to dodge attacks at range 1. If she's possessing Mephisto, her attacks ignore stun guard. And if she's possessing Eris, she's able to advance up to 4 spaces before activating. All of these effects are extremely powerful. This is one of her most versatile styles because depending on which puppet she's possessing, she can have almost any tool for any situation. If you're up against a huge juggernaut, possess Mephisto and stun them. If you're up against a brawler who's only melee, possess, possess Loki and dodge them. What if you're up against a ranger who dodges too often? Possess Eris and get in their face. All of these options are really, really powerful, and the added stats from Storyteller help all of those out to boot. Um, it's basically a really powerful style, but is heavily dictated by which puppet you're possessing. So again, don't get puppet locked or else it heavily limits the strength of this very powerful style. Now when it comes to attack pairs, it's really dependent on which puppets you're currently possessing. Uh, so I can't really give you specific recommendations, but some of my favorites are pairing it with Drive and Eris so that you can basically hit everybody on the board. Or, heck, pair it with Eris and Strike so that you're able to hit for a lot at huge amounts of range. And last, but definitely not the least, is Tannis' very unique, unique base. Scene Shift. Now, Scene Shift is very interesting because the stats are X to 4. And that's basically really, really weird stats for a character who is supposedly mediocre, as having a 4 priority base is really, really good. But it doesn't stop there. The X range is dictated by the space occupied by an opponent you've switched sides with this beat. Now that sounds really interesting because a lot of her effects before in her styles allow her to move around a lot. But wait, there's more! The before activating on scene shift allows Tennis to advance up to 4 spaces. For a character that's supposedly a trickster positioning character, she has absurd amounts of movement. Absurd. That's up to 4 spaces. Up to. That is literally better than Dash's movement effect sometimes. It doesn't have to dodge. But you get what I mean. It's very, very powerful and you have to make use of that very well. Because it not only lets you position Tannis wherever you want to possibly dodge the opponent if you were in melee range and then advance forward to be super far away from them. Or maybe the opponent is far away from you and you want to get in and get the hit in. Either way, it's a very, very powerful effect. But it doesn't stop there. If you hit the opponent, you then get to move your puppets around. Um, you can move the puppets up to three spaces. But it doesn't even stop there. If you move the puppets so that they exit an opponent's space, Tannis gains power plus one. This means that in a correct setup, from almost any range on the board, Tannis can hit you for four power at four priority from almost any range, while reconfiguring all of her puppets and her current stand-up to have the optimal position for the next beat. Do I even have to say any of that ever again? Do I have to repeat any of that? That is just absurd. This is one of the best unique bases in this game. It's one of the scariest too. 
So use it very well because the stats and the effects are amazing. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly suggest pairing the stack with storytellers to take advantage of those bonus stats and the specific effects you can gain from your puppets, all of which are extremely useful for this base. Or if you're feeling really ballsy, use it with Climactic as well, because the added speed is really good to get off the before activating, and, you know, being able to switch places with Mephisto allows you to technically hit confirm this better, given that you have the proper positioning. Tannis' two overdrive finishers are Empathy Strings and Curtain Call. Empathy Strings is a very unique overdrive finisher which I might classify as a comeback finisher. Because of its NA range, NA power, and zero priority, all of that sounds terrible. Well, yes it does. However, the passive effects on this thing are absurd. Not only is Tannis able to control all movement and marker effects this beat, if a puppet is between Tannis and the opponent, all life loss and damage that would have been applied to Tannis are now doubled and then are applied to the opponent instead. It's like a huge parry, basically. She counters you super hard with empathy strings. If basically, if Tannis gets this off on you, she just won around two to three beats worth of damage against you. Which is absurd, because not only did she dodge your attack, she then hit you for two attacks worth of damage. That's crazy! This is one of the most unique and interesting unique abilities, unique overdrive finishers, I mean, in this game. And not only that, but it's super powerful, because it's so easy to get the puppet between you and the opponent. You, I am not kidding you, it's super easy to do that. Especially if the opponent starts making use of movement effects, you can then control that to make it so that there is a puppet between both of you. It is crazy good. Really, really good overdrive finisher. And, you know, I highly doubt you'd ever want to use either any other overdrive finisher than this one. But if that's not your thing, you might be into Curtain Call. Curtain Call is a mid-range overdrive finisher that has mediocre power but moderately fast speed. But the effect it has on hit is devastating. Now, Tannis just basically gains a huge power boost depending on how many puppets she has adjacent to her. Which basically means that if she positions well and corners the opponent with this attack, she can, and probably will, utterly kill you in one hit. This overdrive finisher is very powerful, but very hard to set up for, and oftentimes you'll only get to have one puppet adjacent to you as opposed to two, because putting two adjacent to you just basically signals your opponent to dash you away, or pulse or cancel, insert a large list of things that will beat out this attack. But if you're into this kind of attack and like the big payout that it gives for proper positioning, this is the overdrive for you. Now when it comes to using her special action, Tannis looks nowhere else than using a well-timed pulse. Although Cancel is very good, Tannis isn't a brawler. Although she has a lot of brawling-esque effects, she at her heart is a control positioning character who happens to have a lot of movement. And Pulse is the boon of anybody who could relies on positioning to gain their power. So where else do you go but Pulse if you can't overdrive? Now let's move on to the part that everybody loves, Dennis Advanced Strategies and Combos. Now, Dennis Advanced Strategies are relatively simple. It's really hard to tell you guys about this because as somebody who's played a lot of games, a lot of these things seem simple to me, but I then realized that they might not seem super simple to any of you who are watching this and might be new to the game. So I'll try to explain it as best as I can. You have to understand that a winning beat sometimes doesn't necessarily constitute you getting more damage on your opponent. Because a lot of new players I see who use Tannis and in fact use a lot of characters always think that the best action in any beat is to deal as most damage to your opponent as possible. Once you get a few games under your belt, you then realize that that is completely not true because, well... Damage isn't the most important thing in this game? Well, that's not necessarily true because damage wins you games, but 
Sometimes sacrificing 2 points of damage this speed could result in plus 4 damage later on. So basically, if you're Tannis and you basically made a play that made you at least positively trade against your opponent or win that beat by dealing some sort of damage, then you made the same play that allows you to have as many options the next beat as possible and great positioning, you're already winning with Tannis. You are A-OK. -okay. Keep doing that and you'll probably win the game. So what constitutes a good Tannis play? I think it all boils down to three things. Number one, it has to not result in you getting a lot of damage. So dodging your opponent or hitting them and stunning them is key. Number two, it has to position your puppet and Tannis in specific places that allow you a lot of options the next beat. This basically means that by doing your play, you're able to put your puppets in the correct position. Like, if doing a specific play puts Loki in between you and the opponent, you're technically setting up for a Valiant next beat, which is really, really good. And number three, it makes good use of your resources. As a character whose all of her power is dependent on which puppets are on the board, it also heavily limits what her styles can do. Because the moment you possess a single puppet, whichever style that puppet is associated with is technically dead because it does nothing because the puppet it's associated with is not on the board. This means that Tannis needs to manage her styles very, very well. And a good Tannis oftentimes makes sure that whichever styles are in her hand are the ones not associated with the puppet she's about to possess. So this often means that the easy quote unquote way of managing your puppets would be Whichever puppet you're planning to possess next beat, use their style this beat so that it ensures that none of the styles in your hand are dead. And it also ensures that you're able to benefit from the puppet you're currently possessing because again, you can't possess the same puppet twice in a row, which makes it very hard to manage if you lose your steam. Which brings me to my next point, losing steam, tempo, and board positioning as Stannis. All of these things together might seem really complicated on Tannis, like, what's all of this? But think of it like this. Tannis is basically, in short, some sort of weird escalation character. But her means of escalation doesn't come in the form of extra tokens or having bonus stats. It's having correct positioning. So oftentimes it means that Tannis has to give up this beat to dash and use all of her movement effects to like hit you for mediocre amounts of 1 or 2 damage to set up for net beat so that she has an opportunity to deal like absurd amounts of damage or dodge all of your options. The moment Tannis places you in the correct position to well map out all of her attacks, it is the time where you basically get destroyed for 2 beats straight, after which you'll deny her positioning and then she'll have to spend a few beats getting it back. It sounds like a lot like an escalation character, right? You go up, you go down. You go up, you go down. That's how Tannis is. You have to play with the tempo, quote unquote, because you have to manage your cards well and manage your positioning well. So that all is a contrived way of saying that you need to manage your cards well. And so as Tannis, having dead beats are actually beneficial to you because it allows you to reposition really well. So dashing, making use of distress, making use of Playful's low-key possession effect, all of those together basically allow Tannis to dodge, 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 dodge. And as a ghost who possesses puppets, I think it fits with her theme very well. So that's how it is. She has to wait for the perfect time to strike. You just have to look at the current beat sometimes. As many times as I suggested you look ahead and that you think ahead, sometimes you have to really analyze the current beat and think to yourself, is this my high beat? Escalation characters have this very easy because their high beats are written in numbers like, you know, like is Caesar, Cesar. When he's at threat level 3, that's his high beat because it literally says there all of the stats he gains are highest here. But for Tannis, it's very different because her high beats don't come in a set amount of time. They come randomly throughout the game depending on where your opponent moves and where you move. But you always should look at every beat and check, is this a high beat? Can I get a big payout attack in this beat? Can I position myself so that I get to win a lot of damage this beat 
and still reposition my puppets very well for the next beat. All of these are questions you have to ask yourself as Stannis. Now let's move on to some Tannis combos. First up is Storyteller Scene Shift. Now this is really powerful and depending on which puppet you're possessing, it can be very versatile. Use it very well because it has some of the biggest stats Tannis can have. And aside from that, it allows you to reposition your board. VALUE! Next up is Valiant Shot. Valiant Shot is pretty much a no-brainer. If the Loki marker is between you and the opponent, use this and you will almost always trade positively or in fact not even trade at all and just hit your opponent because they don't have enough range to get to you. And finally we have Distressed Burst. It's really really odd to say that but Distressed Burst is actually really good for causing null beats which I think personally is a defining feature in Tannis' playstyle. Causing null beats and repositioning is a big win for Tannis even if no health was reduced from either player. So keep that in mind and use this to cause null beats or if you're really lucky, deal damage to the opponent for free. And that pretty much does it for this final episode of Battle Guides Devastation of Indians. Now it's been a big journey and I'm really happy to have well, gone through all of this with you guys. I remember starting out this series just thinking that, hey, it will be very interesting to show a bunch of people how to play BattleCon, especially considering that I've played way too much of this game. That first video, if you guys want to watch it, I'll link it in the description down below. Holy gosh, I was in my bathroom when I did that, guys. Bathroom! I didn't have a setup, I didn't have a good camera, a good mic, I didn't even have lights. I, 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 I can't... <laughs> uh, I'm getting emotional about this. Um, it was really fun doing this for you guys. And it's really fitting that Tannis is the last character because I have to pull a curtain on this series. It's the end for Battle Guide's Devastation of the Indians. It's, it was really an honor to do all of this stuff for you guys. And, um, I'm really happy that you guys appreciated it. I hope you guys upped your game a bit by watching all of these videos, even if they were long, even if I sometimes released them late. It was really good seeing the way you guys reacted to them, even if there were criticisms. I took them to heart. I tried to make better videos for you guys, and I hope that this is not the end of everything. I'll be coming out with more stuff later on. Who knows? I have to get ready for other things, right? to make battle sessions, more battle tips, so on and so forth. You'll see more of that stuff for me. And that pretty much does it. And if this video got you interested in level 99 games or anything level 99 games related, check the description out below. Um, if you want to talk to me or any of the Battlecon veterans, check the description out below. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget your special action. And thank you so much, World of Indians. Thank you and good night. Now there's no voting at the end of this video, but I have to tell you one thing, a war is coming, a war is coming.